In this video, we will go through the toolbars that make up the BEX Analyzer functions. Now, I have touched on these toolbars previously, but now let's go into a bit more detail. So the toolbar is made up of two rows of icons. The top row I use for designing analysis applications. And what I mean by this is they let us create a unique interface for our reports. And the bottom set of icons I used for opening queries, workbooks, query views, saving workbooks and so on, and actually connecting to the system and refreshing the queries to bring up our selection variable screens. And what we're going to do right now is focus on this bottom row because the top row we will cover much later on in the course when we're tying everything together when we want to build our own analysis application. So first of all, we have this open folder icon. And what this does, it just lets us open a query that's already been defined and also open a workbook. And when I talk about opening a workbook, well, that simply means an Excel workbook, just as you normally would on your desktop. Maybe you save a workbook where well, you can actually save your workbook in BW, which then allows it to be used by many other users. And also, you know, it gives you another place to store your workbook as a backup. Now, next along, we have the save button. No prizes for guessing what this does. <laughs> yep, it saves your query or saves a workbook. Sorry, let me rephrase that. It saves a query view or it saves a workbook. So if I give it a click, we can see we have three options. We have save workbook. So that will save the current active workbook if you've already opened it. We can save as, so save it as a unique workbook. Or we can just save the query view. And what this does is it doesn't store the Excel workbook on the system, but it stores your, your view of the query. Let's say you added three additional fields on here, where you can choose save view. And then the next time you go to open the query, you actually open that view. And what it does, it gives you the drill down state and the number of columns that you previously had on the query. So I guess it just saves the technical information to be able to recreate the query rather than saving a whole workbook file. Now, next along, we have the refresh icon. Now this lets us refresh all the data in the workbook. So at the moment, we've only got one query that's embedded in our workbook. So if we give it a click, well, I'll tell you what, I'll move away first and you can see that the button is pressed in by default. And that means the automatic refresh of a query is turned on. So if I do a drill down, having this pressed in is automatically going to rerun the query and bring down the new data. Now, if I press it again, you can see it's sort of turned off. And that means the automatic refresh is not active. So if you try and drill down, you won't actually refresh the query. What you do have to do is come back up, give it a click again, and you'll notice when I click it, maybe it was a bit fast there, but it actually reran the query and brought down the information again from the BW system. But one thing to keep in mind, this refresh, if I had five, maybe 10 queries all embedded in this workbook, we can give this a click, turn it off, turn it back on, and then it will refresh the data for all the reports. Next along, we have the change variable values button. And quite often, the queries that you will define, you actually define an interface for the user to use to pre-select some data because you don't want to run a report and bring back all the data in the system for that specific info provider. What you would do is say, hmm, at the moment, I, I just want to run this report, let's say for these four organization units. So you would have a selection screen just as you would in a normal SAP system where you can enter the values for these four organizational units, run the query, and then it will just retrieve data for those four values. Now on this query, I don't have a selection screen set up, but we will come back to these. You'll be creating 
selection screens yourself, you'll see me create them. And if you're familiar with the SAP at all, you will be very familiar with selection screens. Next along, we have this little, I guess, um, tools icon. Got a hammer and a wrench there. I'll give it a click. And as you can see, we have the option to create a new query. We have X Broadcaster, which is grayed out. And X Broadcaster, we won't touch on it in this, um, in this course, but that allows you to send reports out to people in your organization as long as it's configured properly and you have the necessary SAP licenses. They do, um, SAP do charge additional for this. Next, you have the planning modeler. We won't touch on that much either. That's for a specific part of BW where you want to actually save data inside an info cube rather than just reporting on it. We have the BEX report designer, and that's for creating reports that have um, sort of pixel perfect layout designs. So maybe if you're designing a form to be printed, you would use the BEX report designer. We also have the BEX Web Analyzer. And as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, even though we have the BEX Analyzer in Excel here, there is a version for the web. Now, in my personal opinion, Excel is much better, much more flexible. It does have all the same sort of functionality, but it's a web interface. I much prefer the desktop. And last but not least, Copy Sheet. And that just enables you to copy a Microsoft Excel worksheet, which will result in a duplication of the one you select. Now I'm going to click away and then we'll click on it again, because as I place the cursor inside our um, active query here, and then go back up and press it, you'll see now we have this additional option. Because our cursor is on a query, it then gives us this additional edit option, and that will take us the BEX Query Designer tool. And yep, we're going to spend a lot of time on that. Next along, we have the global settings icon. And if I give that a press, you can see it opens up a dialog window here with four separate tabs. And there are lots of settings here that you can tailor for your own personal preference. And you can see we have behavior at the top. And it shows the number of objects in local history. This is if you're familiar with uh, your web browser, it keeps web history and so on. Well, the BEX analyzer also keeps information in its memory, in its local history, and you can configure it appropriately. And I don't want to go into too much detail about this um, global settings box because all you need to do with it is have a play around. It really is just changing the way the BEX Analyzer reacts for your own personal preferences. So for example, you could, if you just open up Excel by itself without using the BEX Analyzer icon from your start menu, well, this will force the BW plugin to load automatically. Here you've got display messages from the BW system automatically, show messages for problem analysis, and so on. It's, it, it's just a case of you playing around, seeing what... Uh, what you want to turn on and what you want to leave switched off. Now, my own personal preference is I hardly touch this at all. There really is no need. I'll go along the different tabs and you can just see the options available. There we go. Not that much to it. Next along, we have this little connections icon even though the little tooltip is saying system information, that's right, but really all I use it for is connecting and disconnecting from the system. So if I give it a press, we get this dialog box coming up. It shows us information about our connection to our SAP BW system. We can see the client, the username, the language, and so on. And as I go along, the specific information just about the connection, but like I say, all I really use it for is when I want to disconnect from the system, but still keep my BEX analyzer open, I would just click disconnect. And once I do that, yeah, I might as well do it. We can see we've lost connection. 
If I want to reconnect again, all I need to do is click that button and it will give me a login box. Alternatively, you could close this window down, click the open or click the refresh again and it will give you exactly the same login box. Totally up to you. Here, I'll just click connect. We have the login box again. And I will log in. OK, and then we can continue on. And then no, um, well, I said no prizes for this one, you know, so I'm not going to say again. <laughs> we have this icon here, this little help icon. And that's just application help. It will open up your web browser and take you to the BEX Analyzer documentation as long as it's been set up correctly by your system administrators. And that's the toolbar.